Uh, Ayura Karpisch uh, wird uns heute uh, erzählen eben über Cache as a Safety Valve, uh, warum, uh, was die, was die uh, Ideen dahinter sind, Cache in der heutigen Gesellschaft immer mehr zu verbieten, auch darüber, dass ein Verbot von uh, Bargeld und vor allem anonymen Zahlungen uh, im Endeffekt nichts, auf nichts anderes hinausläuft als uh, ein, ein uh, Einschränken der Meinungsfreiheit. Ein kurzer Überblick über Herrn Karpisch Lebenslauf, uh, er ist Mitbegründer und Vorstand des Think Tanks Eines den er 2005 gegründet hat. Davor war er in nationalen und internationalen Finanzbehörden tätig und hat dann eben 2005 den Think Tank Eines gegründet, arbeitet dort jetzt als externer Experte und Analyst für verschiedene, für verschiedene Investmentfirmen und unter anderem auch für die World Bank. Er ist außerdem ein Bestseller-Autor seit dem Jahr 2015 mit dem Buch Bad Money, das er über die Finanzkrise geschrieben hat und das er natürlich besonders deswegen geschrieben hat, weil Money sein Hauptschwerpunkt in allen seinen Forschungen ist. Noch ein kurzes Wort über Eines. Eines ist ein langjähriger Vater des AEC und des Heik instituts Wir machen mit Eines gemeinsam die Website staatspost.t, das ist ein Steuerkalkulator. Eines und wir bringen auch jedes Jahr den Bureaucracy Index heraus, indem wir einen Bericht über die Bürokratie in den verschiedenen EU-Staaten machen und ja, arbeiten seit Jahren zusammen. Und ich möchte es auch nicht zu weit zu, weit, zu viel zu vornehmen und äh, begrüße Herrn Jörg Karpisch. Dankeschön. Dankeschön. Danke. Also guten Tag. Äh, danke für die Einladung. Äh, ich werde meinen Vortrag in Englisch halten. Also äh, entschuldigen Sie mich, äh, ich tue äh, Deutsch verstehen, aber sprechen ist ein bisschen schwer für mich, also über den Englisch sprechen. Obwohl ich äh, ich weiß, dass, dass äh, ich kann auch Slowakisch sprechen und zwei Herren werden schon verstehen, was ich sage, aber ja, das ist nicht. So, today I would like to talk about money and especially about the cash, uh, as was already introduced by, by my colleague. Uh, this is a very uh, popular topic right now because like, uh, the authorities would like to curb uh, our use of cash, our use of, of of money, as you know, probably the ECB like uh, start producing the 500 euro bill already. It's still used in the circulation, but not produced anymore. And well, my motivation is to explain the reasons behind this uh, tendency because, like, I don't trust the official reasons. The official reasons, if you read the papers, read the documents of uh, European Commission and, and official like uh, banks, is that. They want to hinder money laundering and uh, ter financing of terrorism. So, so they are focusing on the crime, the crime that is uh, enabled by the use of, of cash. But I don't think this is the real reason and I would like to uh, explain why. Well, these reasons are used all the time when they try to uh, curb our liberties. Like uh, whenever they want to take away some uh, liberty from, from people, they use these like, this very uh, popular reasons like uh, terrorism and crime. And in Slovakia, for example, the most frequently used uh, killing weapon is, is knife. But nobody like seriously thinks about banning knives from, from ordinary lives. Like nobody tells us, okay, don't use knives because knives kill. Uh, we have other tools and other institutions that should solve the problem of uh, killing by knives, uh, not just by banning all use of, of knives. So, so banning cash just to uh, stop terrorism or, or stop money laundering, I don't think it's, uh, it's, a, it's the proper way. Uh, if you, like, like why cash? Like, why is cash so important? Like, because uh, you you increase the cost of uh, taking out money from the official banking sector. Like, uh, if you, if I go to the bank and try to withdraw my one million dollars, well, I don't have one million. Let's imagine I have one million dollars. If I would withdraw the money in uh, two dollar, twenty twenty dollar bills, I would need three point five suitcases. Like, it's quite heavy. It's fifty five kil kilograms of paper. So it's quite bulky. But if I would do it in a 500 euro bills, then it's just uh, one fifth of a suitcase. It's just like uh, really tiny 
stack stack of money. So it's it's really easy to take out my life savings and just hide them somewhere. And if we don't talk about my savings, and if we talk about banks, for example, it's much cheaper for them to store cash somewhere. If it's in 500 euro bills, then if it would be in 50 euro bills, like the cost go down like by by half or, or even more. So in my opinion, this is the main reason. They just try to increase the cost of taking out cash from the official banking system. And if you imagine like you produce money, you are you are serving people by producing money. That's what should central banks do. Like we use their product, the product is money. The most popular product of European Central Bank is 50 euro banknote. The second most popular product was 500 euros banknote. So just imagine that you're serving people and you have a very popular product and you kill the second most popular product in, 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 in the form of 500 uh, euro banknote. So it doesn't really make sense. I don't know whether you know uh, 500 euro uh, banknote isn't the biggest one. Do you know which one is even, even bigger in, in terms of value? Thousand so francs. Exactly, exactly. Swiss francs. So, so this is uh, thousand francs is becoming the the most popular banknote right now. I would say. And another reason why not to kill 500 euro uh, banknotes and and even 100 dollar banknote because there is a discussion in the United States about stopping producing 100 uh, uh, dollar bills uh, is that all the world is using this money because like not every country is enjoying uh, freedom not every country is enjoying a uh, government that is like work, working at least a little bit properly and all these countries that don't have very stable uh, governments, very stable central banks are using this foreign money in, in the uh, in the form of uh, US dollars and as well as the uh, European banknotes. And you can see it on the, on the premium that is like achieved uh, on 100 dollar bills in these countries. You, you can see they put pay 20 or 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 even some, in some like places even more uh, premium person premium on on this on these notes. Well, the most extreme example what can go wrong when bank cash uh, was provided by India two years ago. I don't know whether you noticed, but this was like the biggest economic catastrophe, catastrophe in the past decade, I would say. Because like for one seventh of world population, from day one to day two, like the cash was bad. Like 85% of the value of cash was like abolished from day, day to day. All the people had to take their cash into the banks and change it into the new banknotes or open a bank account. At that time, only 25% of Indian people had bank accounts. Only 50% of them had any kind of identification of their person. So, so this was like just taking taking away money from ordinary people by banning the cash. Well, uh, the mo uh, the government at that time used the same arguments. Like they used like it's. Uh, it's used in uh, money laundering. It's for fake. Like many people are, are just like making fake money, so we have to clean the system from these uh, criminals. But at the end of the day, just the ordinary people got killed because like uh, the, all the criminals like just hired ordinary people to exchange money for them. But the normal people that had to work for a living, that had to wait these huge lines in front of the banks. I don't know whether you saw the pictures. There were people dying in the lines, like changing the money. Uh, they got like uh, taxed because, like, at the end of the, end of the day, if you ban the cash, it's just another kind of the tax. There was a limit, like you could exchange up to four thousand five hundred, if I remember correctly, of rupees. That's uh, around hundred euros. Above that, you had, you were taxed by thirty or forty percent. So, so basically, the government took away a part of people's money and part of, of their wealth. I'm not suggesting that we are going that far, but I'm, I'm, uh, in my opinion, that's very similar to banning the cash. Like, like this is like what would happen if you would like try to uh, try to do it. This is the list, but it's in Slovak, but it's a list of already existing limitations on using of the cash. Slovakia right now we have uh, 15,000 euros limit, like. 
if ordinary persons like exchange in a way they can use only amounts up to 15,000 euros. I was buying a car like two years ago, it's a used car, I'm not very rich guy, but I had to go into a bank and pay the guy in bank. Both of us had to go into a bank and I had to pay money to the bank teller and the bank teller deposited the money on the guy's account. Like totally ridiculous transaction. But if I wouldn't do it, like, uh, I would be like uh, doing crime. So, as far as I know, you don't have yet any limits on cash. Is it, is it true? Like, can I can I pay you hundred thousand euros right now? Please. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. No. 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 So what? What are the limits? Fifteen thousand is. Fifteen thousand. Yes. Okay. But only to pay into the bank account. If you go to the bank. Okay. And so yeah, yeah, okay. Cash, cash, cash is for both. Yeah, but between uh, like persons, I mean cash. I mean cash. No. So it's 15,000, right? 15,000. Yeah. Between businesses, like uh, business transaction, in Slovakia it's 5,000. You shouldn't do anything between businesses in cash. In cash nothing. Uh, 10, 10 euros or something like that. It's okay. okay. <laughs> if you buy a pen or something like that, it's okay. Uh -huh. Okay, cash. And you get a receipt with a QR code. Uh -huh. That's okay, but yeah. if you don't get the receipt with a QR code, taxi no, cards, for example, you yeah, I'm talking about the legal transactions with receipt, but but by using by using cash. So in we Spain, sorry, in Spain you have 2,500, and in Italy 1,500. Yeah, more. yeah, yeah. In, in France 3,000, as, as far as I know. So it's it's really you can see it's already really strict. Like like 3,000 is like monthly pay for some people, so it's not that much money. So we are already like limiting the use of the cash right now, even without like abolishing the, the big notes. And in this, like, uh, we have this law like, that you cannot use like 15,000 euros or more in cash. And at the same time, this is like uh, our prime minister, and this is the Ministry of uh, Interior behind him. And I don't know whether you noticed, but uh, uh, a journalist was killed like one year ago in our country because of his work. Like he was like uncovering corruption scandals of our government, and this was like the reaction of our prime minister. Like we will pay one million euros to anyone who will provide information. What in cash? Did? In cash. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the one million. That's the one million on on the table. So so. <laughs> on the one hand, I cannot pay a guy for a car 15,000 euros. So it was 15,500 to be, to be precise. <laughs> on the other hand, our prime minister just like delivers what, one million of euros on the table. My one I think um, some million people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is like my money like, uh, showing, <laughs> showing off on the table. At the same time, if he wanted, really wanted to have to information about this, this, this murder, he could have asked the guy standing behind him, but just, they're just inside the information. But, sorry, uh, I love this story. A friend of mine won in the lottery uh, 30,000 euros with oil or or something like that. He cut the money in a plastic bag, <laughs> 100 uh, euros per piece inside, uh -huh. and he went home with <laughs> So if you win something, you get it in cash. You get it in cash. Not you get it in a bank transfer. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And so, so he was paid in 100, 100 bills, not yeah. 500. Yeah. He would have no, it no, like no. one fifth. No, 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 it was a big one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, like so. So now I, I would like to explain why I don't agree with these like limits and with banning cash. The first thing is like the uh, the transaction is like speech. In my opinion, I was already mentioning it. Uh, by breakfast, like money is language, and, and if you just limit the language, you, you just like hinder the communication in the society. And if you push all the people into the banks and into the electronic money, like uh, then someone can read all their communication. Like if you, if I have to transact everything in money, then there is someone who can read everything I did in the in my life. And I can imagine in, in, in societies like Austria, where the government works, somehow from the outside at least, uh, it's okay, you feel safe. But in Slovakia, even now it's not safe, because like our prime minister is using this information against their political opponents. Like He just like bribes some guy in a tax office or in a bank, 
and he tells him these transactions, and then he provides him this information that is used against this guy. And if it's used in a political uh, fight, it can be used in criminal activities as well. So if I will have to transfer everything, if I will have to talk with banks, only with banks, then I will live with the scare that someone, someone somewhere can read it sometime. So this is, and I want to have option to talk to you without somebody listening. And this is like the main argument, my ma main argument for cash. Like if I want to, well, people usually voluntarily give up cash. They use their cards and they pay. Okay, that, that's fine with me. If they choose to, they can do it. But I want to have the option to pay a guy in cash that I know that nobody, uh, nobody can see and nobody will read. So this is my first argument. The second argument. Do, do you think that Austria is different from Slovakia? Well, <laughs> and we have several investigations going on against us. And I can tell you, they even they, because all authorities today have the power, at least local, the financial authorities, national bank have authority to move into any bank account. Mm -hmm. And they are talking with, with me about transfers I did in Russia for 100 euro. For, for translating services, by the way. Mm. Yeah, so they, they catch everything. They can use and they use everything against you. You have to be a, your account to practically anything. We are transparent and it's used. Yeah, so. I agree. My only reason is that grass is greener on the other side of the fence. <laughs> no, I don't, yeah. don't have that much information about your country. We, have, a lot. we have an office in Slovakia, so believe me. I don't, so I'm even thinking of, of moving to Slovakia because I think there's <laughs> more in the Don't destroy my dreams. I, I have some hopes that some countries like you yourself, but okay. And then, uh, but but you're, totally, you're totally right. The, and the, it's kind of censorship, you know, because like, if you have to explain your, your communication, like from the past, that's kind of censorship because in the future you will be very, very, very careful what kind of uh, communication will you use, what kind of transaction will you use. So you, are, you will censor yourself just by the fear of future consequences. When you say money is language, I think we, you may add something, bank is prison. <laughs> You're like a, like a prison. Let, let, let's, Everything is under let, Let's now turn to banks. Actually, I was working in the Austrian bank uh, in the past. Communal credit, it got nationalized afterwards. <laughs> it was not my fault, sorry. Uh, so, my second argument against like using just electronic money, because electronic money means bank money. Like, all the time. There is no other electronic money right now. Well, there is one that I will mention at the end of the, uh, my speech. But right now, electronic money means bank money, and it means that you have to trust banks. Because like, bank money is not real money, it's ma uh, Austrian School of Economics and Mises called it uh, money substitutes. It's not money proper, it's just promise to pay you money on demand. So, and you can see the difference, like there is money and money substitutes. If you have money substitutes, you are bearing the risk of the of the party, so you're bearing the risk of the bank. So, uh, and, but people usually don't recognize it. They don't think in these terms until the crisis comes. Because when you are standing in the line in front of the, the bank, you know that the bank money is not real money, because you are waiting for the real money in the bank. And you are not getting it, usually, because like the fractional reserve banks have only a fraction of the reserves, so, uh, so the money substitutes are backed just by a fraction uh, of real money. So, if authorities push me into the banking system, they push me into the risk of accepting promises to pay of banks. And I don't like, well, sometimes I like to hold promises of banks to pay me, but sometimes I don't. Uh, ten, ten years ago, I didn't like very much the promises of banks to pay me. Because, like, <laughs> they didn't, didn't look very safe. Uh, there was a like bank run, but no, nobody was like uh, on Wall Street. There were like the richest guys in the world were, were standing lines in front of the banks, and there was a guy from Wall Street Journal that was there like taking pictures of these bank runs, and they decided not to publish these pictures because they would like scare us, the small people. So uh, there are times that I don't want to be in banking sector, and these times are important. So I want to have the option to have all my life savings in this suitcase. And the smaller the suitcase, the better for me, because like I don't have to, I can carry it with me. Well, right now my life savings would fit into the jacket, but 
in future when I will be rich and important. I don't want to carry huge suitcases so everybody knows that I have my life saving life saving business. And the risk of banking sector, uh, some people think that the, the problem was solved. No, I would say like the problem of not uh, functioning, not properly functioning bank se sector, we still have it, we just like uh, drowned it in money and right now we, we, we just don't perceive the problems. And you can see it on, uh, on the way how the banks like are just merging. Like at the, in the 90s in the US you had like uh, many smaller banks, right now you have just like four of them, four giants or five giants that have almost all the market. And this is like continuing, this trend is continuing and I'm talking about like we have a capitalism and in capitalism we have like protected animals, like there is a list of protected animals and these animals are systemic banks, like you have in IMF you have a list of 126 protected institutions that cannot go, go bankrupt in our system. And this is like weird, like if you don't apply the free market principles on everybody then uh, the guys that are that feel protected will misuse the, their position and will do risky business. And basically what authorities want me to do is to give money to these risky guys. So, so this is like my second argument. I think we should start to hunt financial pandas. Like we, I call them financial pandas because they, they are sure that they won't feel killed. They, they, there is no hunt uh, going on on them. And this is a little bit ironic because there is a guy that is like having a store in a small store hiring a, employing one one person and he can go bankrupt any day like nobody will care nobody will tear uh, uh, will, will cry for him but we have these big institutions that we care about and we, we won't let it go down and my last argument and the main argument is like it's not about the money laundering it's not about terrorism financing you can finance terrorism by 10,000 10, euros like it's not very expensive you can pay it in uh, in, in whatever, like you, you can think of everything. I, I think the main reason is the monetary policy, because like the, the authorities saw what happened in the last, last crisis, and they saw that they were limited. What can they do by cash? Because like cash is like holes in the experiment hall. There is a professor with his experiments, and the subjects of the experiments. Uh, don't <laughs> sometimes want to leave, they want to open the door and leave the experiment. And this is what cash is, like, it's for us, if we want to leave the monetary experiment going on right now in our system, we take out the cash and just run away. And I think the main motivation of banning cash and limiting use of cash is by closing the door for us so we cannot run away. And this is the main argument. And it's, it started a long time ago, like, this is I don't know whether you know who it is. Do you know who the, who the guy is? He's a famous economist. It's not me, but... <laughs> John Law? It's John Law, it's John Law, yeah. This is like the first, in my opinion, the first nice illustration of what bad money does. I, I have written a book about bad money. This is bad money. Bad money is money substitutes, printing money. Well, he's like uh, ingesting gold and silver and printing like bills, like paper bills. And this was like the Mississippi bubble, like the, 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 that was the result of the bad money. But at that time it was like just localized in, in France, in part of France, not all of France. Right now we, we are doing this experiment on a European wide level, or on a worldwide level even, because like the American Central Bank is doing the same, uh, same stuff. And I have evidence to provide you that, that this uh, uh, struggle to bank cash is not coming from like criminal or whatever money laundering, but it's coming from monetary policy worries. Because like you can read there is an INF report and they they try to estimate like what kind of negative interest rates will push you to take out cash. And they estimate it somewhere between uh, 0 0.5 and 2%. So it means like if the next <coughs> crisis comes and ECB says, okay, not minus 0.54, but minus 2%, and your bank will tell you, okay, minus 1% for you, you will pay me 1% for the privilege to have open a bank account and to have money in my bank, then people log logically will take out the cash, and they estimate that it will happen somewhere between uh, 
half a percent or two percent in the mind. So, in my opinion, uh, the tendency to restate the use of cash is like the preparation for the next crisis. So they have the tools to close the door on the experiment uh, lab and not let you leave with your, with your cash. Well, still they cannot ban 50 euros or 10 euros or 20 euros, but they care about the big guys, about the banks, about the institutions, about the, the companies. So they don't take out the cash and, and leave. <coughs> and well, in my opinion, the probability that there will be another crisis is not zero. Let, let me tell you that. Like, uh, in my opinion, the problems were not solved by the heroes in the central bank. They were just like uh, papered over with the with the new bad money. Uh, they bought us some some new time. And in Europe, let's let's move to Europe because that's where we live. Uh, in 2012. Uh, I, I draw that's a probability tree. I, I ask the question, what kind of currency will I have in Slovakia in the year 2022? And it wasn't clear, but at the end of the day, Euro was the, the answer. Like, like I don't, I'm, I'm not going to translate it all. It just, let me tell you that I had to draw a probability tree, what kind of currency will I have in 10 years? And if you have asked this question, have to ask this question, you know that something's wrong, no? If you are not sure that your currency will survive next 10 years, and if the biggest probability is 36% that it will be euro, you know that the currency is not very stable. Well, the problem we were solved in 2012. Mr. Draghi uh, told us that the bumblebee will fly and that he will print any amount of money needed to euro to survive. And if you listen carefully, if an economist is telling you that he will print any amount, he is telling you that he is not thinking rationally. Because he is like telling you that he has a goal. He's not an economist anymore. He has a goal, political goal. That's the survival of Euro, Euro currency. And he will use any amount of cost to achieve this goal. So, in my opinion, uh, this is not very uh, healthy setup. Uh, the solution was like the ECB printed new money, money was uh, pay out, paid out to the banking sector, some of the money came back to the sovereigns uh, by buying of bonds, state bonds. Later in 2015, you know, the quantitative easing in Europe was started uh, and the ECB started to buy uh, state bonds directly, well, on the secondary market, but directly, not just from, from banks. And this was really heavy buying. Like uh, in three years, they they created like 2.6 billion euros, and it's like the, these huge numbers are difficult. If I calculate it on on the members of my family, we are like uh, five right now. Every the uh, ECB printed 7,600 euros per member of my family. So basically, they in the last three years they printed 35,000 euros and gave it to governments. Well, I'm not a Keynesian, but I, if I would agree with Keynesian stimulation of the economy and uh, scare of deflation of everything, I would say, ECB, why not giving it to my family this month? Like, why, 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 why to give it to banks, to give it to governments? Just give it to me and I will increase the price level happily. You would do as well, I, I imagine it. So, so, in the last three years, ECB printed like huge amounts of money just to buy these good times that we have right now. In this graph, you, you can see that as they were buying debts, government debts, they were buying seven times more government debts than was needed to refinance the, the government. So, so they were the, they, are, they are the huge, the, the biggest player on this bond market. So they are distorting the markets. At all. This is like a sh short, short than what was happening. Like just I mean, the Draghi like dropping these money substitutes on the system. And I, in my opinion, we are now. Seeing the, the effects of this of this monetary policy, uh, not only in Germany we can see some worries about whether there are bubbles or not. In Slovakia right now we live in a situation like uh, do you know what inflation rate we have? Like just just estimate, just guess. Mm -hmm. We have 2.7 percent uh, inflation right now. It's going a little bit down because like the the oil price of oil was going down, but. At the, at the time, as we had like almost 3% inflation, banks were giving out mortgages to people for 1%. Can you imagine like uh, you are paying the debtors 2% real rate to take out mortgages? 
what will happen. Like everybody will take out mortgages and you will see this, like these are households, the blue, blue, blue line and the, the level of debt of households grew by 3.5 times in 10 years. So basically you lured all the people into debt in Slovakia by paying them for taking out debt. And in a free market system, I cannot really imagine a stupid lender as that that would give out people uh, loans for less than its inflation. Can you imagine? Okay, well, if you would ask me like how much would I ask for, for a loan? Like, at least I would start with the inflation rate. But right now, banks are giving out 30, 30 years loans for less than this inflation. But if the ECB says do it, they just do it. What do you mean? If the ECB says do it, yeah, well, just Yes, do it. because why, why, can, why do banks do it? They're not stupid, they, they earn money because they, they, give, they, they get the money for free. For, for free, like it's, it's our money. We, ECB creates the money, takes from us because like it takes our resources, gives it, gives it to banks, and banks lend it to people, and they earn the, the difference. But yes, like uh, uh, in normal times, if you, if they would have to lend out savings, real savings, it won't be possible. And my argument is that that banks lured Slovakia and Slovak households into. We have something very similar that Spain had before the last crisis. Uh, the indebt indebtedness of Slovak households was growing 15% uh, a year in the last years. Every year, 15%. So, so in my opinion, the next time, like as the good times go away, as the interest rates start to rise, sometime they will, I would guess, we won't have zero low interest rates forever, then some of the Slovak households will have a problem with this debt because they were lured in by, by artific artificially low interest. Well, some people think that the euro was success, so it, defines, uh, it depends how you define the success. In my opinion, as you probably noticed, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, and another argument why is well, it was not that such a success is the, uh, the growth. Like, the growth is decreasing and increasing. After the last crisis, the growth is the weakest after the Second World War. Like, it's, you can see it like, like the growth is really, really slow. And it's, it's stopping right now. Maybe you noticed, but Germany didn't grow uh, in the last, uh, last year. Well, they are not technically in a recession yet because they grew by zero, so it's not a real recession, but Italy is already in a recession. So, so my question is, like, what will happen if they want, if, if the ECB will have to stimulate and, and, and push, push the economy forward? Well, this was the idea. Let's say the Euro and the European Union buy like some more integration because it worked so well in the past. So let's integrate even more. But I don't think uh, both of these guys are, are not uh, very strong anymore. I would say so. I'm, the question is like, what will happen next? Like whether we will try to forcibly integrate the system or or, or, or not. Uh, it's quite funny that Macron is perceived as the engine of integration in Europe. He was talking about like, establishing a Ministry of Finance for the European Union and I was laughing because like France is the country that cannot really follow a simpler rule. They, they cannot really uh, balance the budget, not balance the budget, they, they always step over this 3% deficit rule and they ignore it. And a president of country that ignores this simple primitive public finance rule wants to have a ministry of finance, they would ignore him. Like they, they would, do, they wouldn't care. And I don't know whether whether you know what's the budget deficit for the France for the next year. Do you know? It's minus 3.5. In good times, in good times, they ignore the rule, the basic rule that uh, eurozone was built on. So, so in my opinion, in the long term, the euro has a huge problem. And the problem is, is that we have a, uh, <coughs> we have euro that is not protected protected by any any fiscal rules. Actually, the problem with like decreasing productivity and decreasing growth is the same in the in the United States. Uh, and I, I would say that it's the problem of bad money because like if you misuse money that much, then you pay the price in the lower productivity because like bad money, printing money means redistribution. And if you redistribute from people that create values to people that 
spend values you will get less and less and less and less growth and more and more and more debt and that's what we see like we we see decrease in productivity in all developed countries this is like 10 years moving average actually my argument is uh, you don't see the, the the axis but here is like 70s it's 1970 and here is 2015 and bad money real bad money was born in 70s and 71 as Nixon told us that temporarily we will uh, we will abolish the backing of US dollar by gold temporarily it means like over over 40 years already and you can see the productivity went down and the financial sector uh, hugely hugely increased the profits of financial se sector increased and what increased as well are debts so we have decreasing productivity increasing debt if you are a, a CEO of company that <coughs> has decreasing productivity and increasing debt what would you do I would leave like <laughs> and, and we we have it in the developed world right now and the only way how you can live is, is by cash like if you don't want to pay the price by rising inflation then, then you use cash I will end in, in a minute so we can have time for, for discussion but uh, let me tell you some, some recent developments as you know ECB didn't even start to increase the interest rates yet they, well, it's 10 years after the financial crisis and they stopped stimulation of the economy in December. So, so they, 10 years after the last crisis, after the last recession, they stimulated the economy so it works. Like it's, it's totally crazy in my opinion. Well, I don't know anything, I just lived in a communist country before, but if you have to stimulate 10 years after the crisis, then something is wrong. Uh, the Fed was increasing interest rates already for two years, but now something broke. Something means uh, stock stock markets. Like uh, at the end of the last year, the stock markets fell by 20 percent. Everybody got scared. Even U.S. president, he was like shouting that uh, let's fire this guy from the central bank, Jay Powell. Uh, but Jay Powell understood the message and and changed the, the course of the monetary policy. And he's not increasing interest rates anymore, and he's talking about like maybe uh, stopping, stopping selling selling bonds that they were buying, and maybe lowering the interest rates. So, so the central bank again like listened to the uh, crying of the stock markets and all of the of the financial sector and changed the curve. So, ten years after the crisis, we again are beginning to stimulate the economies. And you can see. Uh, with ECB, with uh, Chinese Central Bank, uh, Bank of Japan is stimulating for, for the last 10 years, and the American Central Bank is stimulating as well. So what does stimulating mean? It means printing money. What it means? It means that uh, probably sometime in the future we will pay by, by increasing prices. And there is not uh, zero probability of next crisis, so I would like to keep my option to leave the crazy experiment of these guys and, and take out my, my money in cash. So this is the preferred solution for every economic problem right now. It means take out money from the central banks and pay whatever you want. This is like British Prime Minister taking out money from the central banks to pay for Napoleonic war wars. But this is what is used right now as well. Like ECB is buying Italian bonds. Uh, just to solve this, this fiscal problem. But if you overdo it, you have this, this risk. This is like the end point of bad money. If you have to pay <coughs> more in paper for toilet paper than is in, a, in the toilet paper, then that's the end point. This is from Venezuela, as you probably know. I'm not suggesting that we will get there, but I'm suggesting that we are on the trajectory. The larger the monetary union, the richer the countries, the more time you have till you use up the reserves and get gets to here. But but I think I think that the inflation is the future for our money. Like and it doesn't matter whether it's euro or, or US dollar. To leave a little bit more optimistically this, this, this lecture, uh, let's let's look what our options are. Like how can we protect ourselves from these policies? Well, it's difficult because I cannot create the new money and, 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 and provide you better services with carpish euros because I would go to jail so, so it's not I cannot compete with the state money so 
one option is to use like alternatives, like not only cash. I'm not saying that we shouldn't use cash. Cash is very useful, especially in crisis times. But as well, we should probably use the alternatives that you produce, for example. This is the best uh, Austrian product, in my opinion. Uh, it's Wiener Philharmonica, the, 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 coin, the gold coins. Uh, the gold is still used in financial sector quite heavily. It's the fifth most traded financial asset still, but normal people like usually forgot that it's, it's an important tool to, for them to protect themselves. And another alternative was born like in 2009. I'm, I'm, well, I was pissed off by the last crisis. In my opinion, that was a very good illustration of all the things that are wrong in the current system. Like, and Austrians and Austrian economists described this process, process. So I decided to write a book, which was called Bad Money. And there was a guy that didn't write a book, but he wrote a white paper for Bitcoin. It's the same emotion, but he did something different. And Bitcoin is, is his invention how to electronize cash. So basically, Bitcoin, in my opinion, is not money. It's, it's like banking system. Bitcoin is payment system. It's, it's like, uh, as I was telling you at the beginning of the lecture, that the only form of electronic money is bank money. It's not true anymore. Right now, you have another option of electronic money, and it's called Bitcoin. And this is. Uh, and I'm not suggesting to buy these shit coins and, and whatever. I'm suggesting that people learn how to use it so they know how to use it when they will need it. For example, in 2013, if you were living in Cyprus in spring, you found out that the blood banks are closed and you cannot uh, use your money. You, you cannot pay your, uh, your, uh, your people or your friends in Germany with your euros in, in Cyprus. If you would know how to use this parallel payment system, Bitcoin, you could sidestep all these limitations and communicate with the rest of the world with your, with your savings. There was a bubble uh, and all this crypto stuff uh, developed into... Uh, uh, this guy called it like the, the biggest video game in, in the history of, of the world because like everybody was hoping to get rich and competing with other people and, and stuff. But in my opinion, the, <coughs> the core is, is very important and will be useful because uh, as the official banking system will have problems, you can use this parallel private system. That is quite uh, resistance, resistant because like, I don't know whether you know how it works, but it's distributed. It means like you, if you would want to turn off Bitcoin, you would have to destroy like, 40,000 computers and you wouldn't really succeed because just one copy if would be left then it could be recreated in, in the next minute. So, so in my opinion, it's, uh, it might be a use, useful tool in the, in the future. This probably won't happen, but some people hope that, that Bitcoin will solve also this financial panda, pandas problem, but I don't think so. Okay, that, that's the end from me. Like, uh, now, uh, there is space for your questions or for our discussions. So.